All right, I think we're good to go. Good evening, y'all, or afternoon, or whatever time it is where you are. Um, we're so excited to have you tonight to learn a little bit more about Northwestern. My name is Jenna Sikernik. I'm an assistant director of undergraduate admission in our office. Um, couple fun things about me. Uh, I do a lot of cool stuff in our office. One of the things being working with students. Um, right now I work with students primarily that go to high school in Long Island and Westchester County, New York, as well as North Carolina. So if that's you, hi, nice to meet you. Put where you're from down in the, in the chat. If that's not you, also okay. We always love to see where everybody's tuning in from. So maybe you'll meet some, see somebody who's from the same town you are or from somewhere very far away. Um, I'm originally from just outside of Boston, Massachusetts. So if I talk quickly or find a way to seamlessly integrate Cam Newton into a conversation, that's new and fun to say. That's why. Final fun fact about me, I'm actually a proud graduate school alum of Northwestern. I received my master's degree in higher education administration and policy, um, which is a program in our school of education and social policy. So I love sharing my purple pride with y'all. Um, so yeah, we're really excited to talk to y'all tonight. Um, but you're lucky enough to not just have me, but also Drew is joining us. Drew, do you wanna introduce yourself? Sure thing. Thank you so much, Jenna, for the introduction and hi to everyone joining us today. A few fun facts about me. My name is Drew Hazen. I am a graduate counselor in our Office of Undergraduate Admission, and I am originally from Rockford, Illinois, but I'm tuning in today from Evanston, Illinois, representing the, um, the cats here in Evanston. Uh, I am a double alum of the university. I just graduated with my master's degree at the end of June um, in the School of Communication. And I'm also a graduate of the undergraduate class of 2018, also from the School of Communication, where I was studying human communication sciences. And I also took classes and received a certificate in our comedy arts module program. And I'm very excited that Jen and I get to share a little bit about this university that we love so much. So back to you, Jenna. Thanks, Drew. Um, so Drew and I are going to talk about Northwestern tonight. I know that may be surprising some of you. We're going to start with our academics and then take go outside the classroom to our culture and community. And then we'll wrap up with some information on admissions and financial aid at Northwestern. Um, after that, Drew and I will take about 15 minutes worth of questions. So um, if, you, if you have a question now or if you um, start to think of one of the presentation, maybe write it down on your phone or a sheet of paper. And then towards the end, start putting them in the chat. We want to make sure we're able to get as many questions as possible tonight. Um, but I think it's always good to get started with the basics. And one of the basics for us is our location. So Northwestern University, our 8,000 undergraduate students is located in Evanston, Illinois. Um, Evanston is great for so many reasons. We'll get into a little bit more later, um, but everyone comes to Evanston from so many great places. Um, our students come from all 50 states and over 50, 75 different countries. If we expand that to our graduate students, more than 150 different countries are represented on Northwestern's campus. This geographic diversity is just one of many ways our students make our campus a diverse place to be, whether it's diverse racially, socioeconomically, religiously, politically, our students are diverse in every way you can think of. And our students um, really get to benefit from this diversity in many ways, um, one being our small discussion-based courses, because in these courses, students can learn and hear about experiences that may differ from their own, which we think benefits everybody. But our commitment to small discussion-based courses begins as soon as we apply, when you apply to one of our six undergraduate colleges. But don't worry, you are by no means stuck to that decision. In fact, more than 70% of students will choose to study more than one thing at Northwestern. So can couple, that can look a couple different ways, whether it's a double major, um, you can have a dual degree, you graduate in five years um, with two bachelor's degrees. That also means two tassels on your cap when you graduate, which is pretty neat. Uh, major, minor, uh, major, minor certificate. You can even triple major in one of our schools if you're feeling extra ambitious. It's totally up to you as a Northwestern student to really create your own unique learning path, um, what we call our six school model. So our one Northwestern will home to six different colleges, the largest being the Weinberg College of Arts and Sciences, which is home to about 50% of our student body. Our second largest is McCormick School of Engineering. I think McCormick is great for so many reasons, but what really helps it stand out is the unique whole brain approach they bring to engineering. They're ensuring that students are graduating as well-trained and educated engineers, but also as creative all-around problem solvers, ready to, ready to tackle issues we don't even know exist yet. Our School of Communication 
is fantastic. Um, it's home to some great majors, everything from radio, television, and film to communication studies. Uh, our Medill School of Journalism, Media, and Integrated Marketing Communications is world famous and provides uh, one of the few undergraduate journalism majors in the country and one of the most respected journalism majors in the country. Our Bean School of Music is great because it's conservatory style. So students have access to amazing professors, performances, resources, all without that heavy competition that comes with the conservatory and an amazing liberal arts curriculum as well. Last and certainly not least is our School of Education and Social Policy, or we like to call it SESPI on campus. We also like to say SESPI is the smallest but mightiest school. Um, each year, there are about 50 incoming students that come into SESPI. By the time those students are getting ready to graduate, the number grows to actually around 150 students. I think that's a great example of the flexibility you will find at Northwestern, both in and out of the classroom, but especially within academics. Um, we really encourage our students to follow their interests and their passions, no matter what school they're located in. So by the time they're getting ready to graduate, students will brag about taking classes in four, five, sometimes even all six schools, and that's something we love to see. Um, Drew, I know you've had your own experience across our six schools here at Northwestern. Yeah, I would definitely love to share a little bit more about the student experience of being uh, across all the different schools we have here. Like Jenna mentioned, people are very proud of the fact that they can call one school home, but also take classes across many different areas. For me personally, I graduated and took classes in the School of Communication, but I also took classes in five of our six schools, and that's very common to see students doing. Um, you have the option, if you're wanting to, to take a really deep dive into one academic area, or if you also have an interest to explore across all these different schools, that's an option as well. Really nice knowing that you have so much flexibility to explore across all that the university has to offer academically. But at the same time, talking about taking classes across all the different schools, um, right now when most of us are in the midst of our college search process, maybe getting a bit ahead of ourselves. So why don't we wind things back to where all of us are right now as students. So for some students that are listening, maybe some of you have known for quite some time what you're wanting to study or be involved with at the college level. Maybe you've known for a long time that you want to study medicine, study the arts. Um, maybe you dressed up as a college admission counselor, um, like Jenna and myself for Halloween one year, and that became a life goal of yours. Whatever it is, um, know that you are going to be able to, as I say, take a deep dive into that area and explore it during your time here. But I would also wager that many students um, out there um, aren't fully decided in terms of what their interests are. Maybe you're still looking to discover what that is and are hoping Northwestern can help prompt you there. We're more than happy to do so. I will say if you aren't entirely sure on what your academic interest is just yet, know that you are in very good company. Not knowing is actually our most popular major here on campus, so you're in very good hands. And we want to make sure that students have the opportunities to, as I said, discover the coursework that's going to ignite their passions and explore across all these different areas as they're looking to um, put together that academic passion. Uh, what's great is that as you're going to be exploring across all of these different schools, you're going to have a lot of support and resources from our faculty as well as our advisors on campus. All of our advising staff are going to be specialized advisors. So that means with any academic interests you have at Northwestern, that um, advisor is going to know specifically your trajectory, both at Northwestern as well as professionally, and can help set you up for success in that regard. If you were to add an area of second um, academic interest, you would be picking up a specialized advisor for that area as well. So it's nice knowing you'll always have specialized support. Then again, you'll also be receiving support from our faculty. We have 1,200 full-time faculty. And a great fact about Northwestern is that every single one of those faculty is going to be hosting office hours during your time as a student. So that means with the classes that you're taking here, you're always going to have an opportunity to have a face-to-face, one-on-one conversation with your professor if you choose to do so. Let me say from experience, that is a great option, especially if you are a little hesitant to raise your hand in class and ask a question out of fear that it might come across a little silly or maybe um, it had already been discussed earlier in the lecture, um, myself being the one I'm describing here. If that describes you and you're wanting just some more one-on-one -on -one support, the faculty are always going to have their doors open for you to have that conversation. We have a six to one faculty ratio as well, meaning that you aren't just going to be a face of a student lost in a crowd that a professor sees. You are going to get to know professors on a personal basis as well. And as Jenna mentioned earlier, smaller, more discussion based seminars are going to be more common than you expect once you arrive here on campus. About 80% of our courses here on campus are only going to be about 20 students or less. 
So you once again are going to not only be able to engage with your professors, but also be able to engage with your fellow classmates in the learning as well, which is something I personally enjoyed so much as a student. And it is really great to have the resources of um, the faculty as well as the advisors we have here on campus because they're going to be very crucial in understanding and navigating our academic structure, which is a little different than some other schools. We function on a quarter system. And I know Jenna wanted to mention a little bit more about that. Thanks, Drew. So I know a lot of you may be coming from high schools like mine where you're on the semester system. And you've never really heard of the quarter system before, and that's absolutely fine. Maybe your high school's on the quarter system already. So you are already an expert and you could probably get this part of the presentation yourself. But either way, we're gonna get on the same page today. Northwestern's on the quarter system, meaning we break the year into four sections, fall, winter, spring, and summer, with the main academic year occurring in the fall, winter, and spring quarters. Um, so don't worry, you will still have a summer break. Um, the majority of Northwestern students, in fact, will never take a class in the summer quarter and will still graduate on time. Some students will use that summer quarter and maybe take one or two classes, take a deep dive into a particular subject. Most of our students will end up using that summer quarter for what we call experiential learning. So these are opportunities like research and internships, which Drew and I will talk a little bit more about later. And some students will choose to go home at summer quarter and take a deep dive into napping on the couch. And that's also totally okay. Uh, we have students that do all three sometimes, you know, it's really up to you, like I said, to create your own unique learning path at Northwestern. But how the quarter system works, that each quarter lasts about 10 weeks and you take about four classes per quarter. And the classes you take are really up to you. So um, I know a lot of universities have a list of classes that all first year students have to take no matter their major. So everyone will take Econ 101, everyone takes, you know, Calc 101, et cetera. We don't have that at Northwestern. Instead, we have distributional requirements, which will vary based on your home school. So the requirements you have in the College of Arts and Sciences will be a little different in the School of Journalism, so on and so on. There's definitely flexibility within these courses as well. So let's say you're coming into the Weinberg College of Arts and Sciences. You are so excited to be a student, um, but then you see that formal studies requirement and you may think, oh no, I don't want to take any more math. I don't know what to do. Don't worry. To fulfill that formal studies requirement, you can take a math class if you'd like or a logic or even a linguistics class. You're, we're all about kind of, you know, being as academically flexible as we can at Northwestern. Once you complete your distributional requirements, the majority of classes you take will be to fulfill any academic concentrations you pick up. But because you're able to take so many classes on the quarter system, it really allows students for, to take classes that just sound kind of fun, even if there's no direct connection to their major. There are so many examples of this, literally thousands of classes I could talk about, but I love talking about uh, building loving and lasting relationships, Marriage 101. This is a class in our School of Education and Social Policy, um, but you don't have to be in Sesame to be in the class. In fact, you don't even have to be married to be in the class. Um, instead, you're partnered up and together you and your partner learn about you know, healthy, loving relationships, communication, how to make it work in 2020. Um, students after taking this class find it so successful they actually end up single um, after taking the class in their personal lives. But don't worry, the class is really awesome. The Today Show actually did a feature on it a couple years ago, so check that out online. The professor of the class wrote a book recently. There's so many great ways you can learn about this class. But classes like Marriage 101 and so many more can unearth a new interest or passion students didn't know they had, and that can add to leading, or that can lead to adding, I should say, another major, minor, or certificate. We have almost 200 different majors and minors at Northwestern, including some you can only find on our campus. One of them is called Mathematical Methods and Social Sciences, or MMSS. It's a mouthful, but it's a really cool modern day approach to math, statistics, and economics. Um, research is also a required component of this program, which is really cool. Students research pretty much everything you can think of from how the current migration crisis in Europe affects finances in several countries in Europe, to how the contestants' gender affects their performance on the TV show Survivor. Really great research done. In fact, these are usually subjects and topics students aren't able to access until at the graduate school level. So really great and unique learning opportunity for our students at Northwestern. Um, but like I said, you uh, have so many options to choose from. It is worth pointing out that um, we have certificates available. Those are four to six classes. Minors are six to nine. And majors are anywhere from 11 to 17 classes. 
But as we all know, learning doesn't just stop automatically as soon as you go outside the classroom. Northwestern absolutely provides opportunities beyond class time to continue whatever it is that you're learning or curious about. One place our students can do this on campus are called innovation hubs or innovation centers. These are places on campus where students can really foster their entrepreneurial spirit and turn an idea they have into reality. There are several places our students can do this on our campus. Um, one of the more popular and well-known ones I would say is the garage. Um, the garage is an awesome space on our campus. Um, yes, it is an old parking garage. No, it looks nothing like it now. It's been transformed into the quintessential startup space with everything from 3D printers to a room full of bean bags to um, sparkling water on tap, which I did not know was a thing until I went to the garage for the first time. Um, there are so many success stories from the garage. In fact, after you watch this today with Drew and I, make sure you check out the uh, Live from Northwestern session we did from the garage um, a couple months back. It's really great. Allows you to learn more about some of our students and the great things they've done at the garage. So quick plug there. Uh, but uh, one story I'll tell today about a success from the garage uh, involves, uh, I think, some of our favorite drinks, especially during these times, coffee. So about four or five years ago, a couple first year students got together and they said, you know what, I love Northwestern so far. One small problem, there is not enough coffee on campus. So they took the next natural step, which was to build a bicycle. This is not just any bicycle though. This is a bicycle that brews fresh cold brew coffee while you ride it. Um, soon uh, the students named this company Brew Bike. They started uh, creating or taking their specially a one of a kind bike all around campus and selling fresh cold brew to their peers, to staff, to faculty. Um, it soon took off because it's really good. Um, brew bike started from one lone bike several years ago to now expanding to several other university campuses across the country. The students that started brew bike, it's now their full-time job. But they all got that help from the garage, which is really great. And students that find internships and even job opportunities from the garage can help them from years to come. But innovation hubs are just one way to continue learning outside the classroom. Research is another really common way, and Drew's going to tell us more about that. Definitely. Jenna described a lot of the examples of how we try and take our classroom learning and apply it to these different environments where students can wrestle with these ideas, almost like an academic sandbox for students to mess around and put things together. And research is another great example of how that can happen. We really do value undergraduate research for our students. We want to make sure you have that opportunity during your time here. And we really value it in that we actually set aside three and a half million dollars every single year just for undergraduate students to participate in research. So even if uh, research isn't something that you are fully interested in right at the start of your experience, which was my story as I uh, entered Northwestern, know that it can become a part of your experience, which it did for my case and many others as well. It's really interesting hearing um, all the different kinds of research people can involve themselves with. Uh, one of my friends, Tyler, who is a biomedical engineer as well as a vocal performance major here at the university, uh, he got the URG or the undergraduate research grant, which allowed him to stay on campus over the summer and be paid as a research assistant for his biology lab, where they helped construct artificial cardiac tissue to build artificial organs. So that was a really cool experience for him that he enjoyed so much, but at the same time, I don't want everyone here thinking that the only research that college campuses have is people in white lab coats, putting test tubes together. That's just not the case. There's a lot of opportunities for research outside of STEM as well. Um, and there's lots of great examples of that. One of my favorites that I always like sharing uh, is my friend Sarah, who is a uh, journalism student uh, in our, uh, yeah, a journalism student in our School of Journalism. And what she did is that same summer that Tyler was working in his biology lab, she got the same grant, except she traveled around the New England area for the summer and researched the history of ghosts and supernatural occurrences that happened in that area. And after her project was done, she actually put together a podcast on her experience. So if you're looking to check out some more audio content, I'm going to plug that as well. Sarah's story is also a really great example of how Northwestern can help students travel, both domestically as well as internationally. We wanna make sure that students have opportunities for international experience if they're choosing to make that a part of their college experience. About half of our student population has some sort of international experience with about a third of our total student population doing your typical study abroad structure. We have over 150 different international affiliated programs to choose from. So there are a lot of options for students. The two key factors I'll mention for the study abroad um, experience at Northwestern is that one, 
any financial aid that you have while you're here at the university will travel with you as you study abroad and apply to travel costs or other costs you have while studying abroad. And then the second point is that any courses or credits that you accumulate while abroad will travel back with you and apply to your degree progress. Those two factors make um, study abroad much more accessible for our students and make it a much more um, exciting option for students if they want that to be a part of their experience. That being said, it is important to note that not every time you go abroad, doesn't, it doesn't have to just be you taking classes elsewhere. There's other opportunities for international experiences. Um, some examples I can think of, I had a classmate, Megan, who is a violinist in Armenian School of Music, and her international experience during her time here came up a bit unexpectedly, where she came to campus her um, senior year on campus, and the orchestra that she was a part of announced that they were doing an international tour through Asia, and so her international experience was getting to perform and explore across all these different series, uh, these cities, and it was just such a great experience for her. I've had other friends who have had international internship experiences as well. Um, this is a bit dated, but I still think it's a great example in that one of my classmates, um, who was also a student in the School of Journalism, a unique part about the uh, journalism curriculum is that for one quarter, you are going to actually stop taking classes and go and work an internship in the field. And my friend Jordan was able to do exactly that. And four years ago now, she was able to go and fly out to South Korea and cover the Winter Olympics at that time, which was such a cool experience. I was very jealous of her, but at the same time, we celebrate our friends' successes here at Northwestern. So it's a great example of just all the different experiences students can have internationally, whether that is through study abroad or some other means as well. Jordan's example and story is also really important to highlight how Northwestern supports students professionally. We want to make sure that you can take all the academic experiences you gather here and apply them to different career or professional opportunities. There's an entire office dedicated to exactly that purpose. It's the Northwestern Career Advancement Office, or the NCA. And they are your one-stop shop for everything career, whether that is having a resume review before recruitment or an, in, uh, an interview. Maybe you're wanting to do a mock interview to walk through questions you might face. Um, maybe you're looking for funding for different professional needs, whether you need to travel for an interview or buy different professional dress, Northwestern's here to support that as well. One of my favorite programs that they put on every year is over the summertime. It's called the Summer Internship Grant Program or the SIGP. And what they do is they um, offer the opportunity if a student receives an offer for an unpaid internship, that's a very valuable experience for them professionally. Northwestern uh, will actually cover the cost of that unpaid internship uh, for those students so that they can participate and still gain a valuable experience without having the financial barrier involved in that experience. So it is so cool to know that there's all these different opportunities um, professionally um, that you can participate in still as an undergraduate student. And a lot of those come from opportunities to apply the learning outside of the classroom, as well as the possibility of international learning as well. And so I like to talk about careers and professional stuff because it is a very good segue about the fact that you aren't done with Northwestern when you walk across the stage at graduation. There's still more to come. There's still more involvement. And that involves our alumni network, which I know Jenna wanted to speak a little bit more on. So I'll pass the baton back to her. Thanks, Drew. Yes, I love talking about um, all the great alumni that have come from Northwestern because even though you're on campus for about four years, Northwestern education really lasts for life. Um, we have so many great alumni you may be familiar with from late night TV Titans, Seth Myers and Stephen Colbert. Um, Megan Markle is an alum of the university. So if you wanna be a duchess or a prince or some form of royalty, Statistically, this is a good university for you. Um, <laughs> but we have so many other great alumni that are definitely making waves in their field that you may not be as familiar with. So for example, Rosalind M. Brock is the youngest ever chairman of the board of directors for the NAACP. She got her start here at Northwestern as well as the founders of Spoon University or Spoon U. Um, so if you're not familiar, Spoon is a fantastic online platform where college students around the country can share their passion for food. So it's everything from recipe ideas, restaurant reviews. Um, when I first moved to Chicago, my dad actually sent me an article from the site, not knowing the Northwestern Connection. Um, the article is called, I think it's like the top 50 things to eat in Chicago before you die. 
And I think it's called that because if you eat all 50 of them, like within the same day, you might actually die. Lots of heavy breaded items on that list. Um, but it's a really great website. We started with our two of our students in Medill School of Journalism that love talking about food, couldn't find a place to do it online, so they made their own. The company has since grown. Um, they recently purchased by Condé Nast, which is the organization that owns the Food Network, among many other notable publications. All these great examples go to show you that no matter what you want to do once you graduate, your Northwestern degree is going to open up so many great doors for you. Um, but I may be getting a little ahead of myself. You know, you're, you're not in your cap and gown quite yet. You're still figuring out if Northwestern is a great place for you. And besides the academics, all the great stuff that we've talked about so far inside the classroom and how that applies to fantastic opportunities like research and internships, um, Drew is going to take us from inside the classroom to outside the classroom, talk about our culture and community on campus. Definitely. It's really important to mention that your entire college experience isn't just inside of a classroom. You don't just transit back from a classroom to your uh, residential space back and forth. There is time spent outside of the classroom. And if you ask any Northwestern student, they're going to say the same thing in that the special part about Northwestern outside of the classes, outside of the great professional opportunities is the fact that the people at this campus, on this campus are truly the ones that make it special. And that was a huge reason for me wanting to stay on and pursue my master's degree immediately after I graduated in 2018. So I hope that can speak a little bit to the community that we have here and um, the reason why so many students call this place home um, because we really do have a special place for our students. Um, my family has a saying that uh, who you choose to surround yourself with in the classroom can have just as much of an impact as whoever is teaching the class. And that was actually one of the reasons why I was drawn to Northwestern because I didn't want just great faculty, I wanted great students as well. And so um, when I called this place a home before, I mean that in a very um, metaphorical sense, uh, but I also mean it in a literal sense because as students, you will be living here on campus um, during your time. We have a two year on campus living experience for our students. Although um, some students may choose to stay on for more time. Um, after that, if they're wanting to do so, you have that flexibility. Um, we're not gonna speak too much on the residential experience. We do have some online resources that I would direct you towards uh, for answering some questions on that. Um, and we also, as a quick plug as well, have some online virtual tours to check out. So if you're wanting to see the physical space of Northwestern and what it's like to be in Evanston on campus, I would direct you towards those because those are really great resources. But something that's really nice to know is that you are gonna be using those residential spaces to find your community on campus to find your family. So if you are wanting to find that group of people, maybe you are able to do it through a residential space. Note that there's also other opportunities for you to do that as well. There's other spaces, what we call our significant spaces available for students as well. Uh, those would include places like any of our religious spaces, the Black House, the Multicultural Center, the Women's Center, the Gender and Sexuality Resource Center. All of those resources are gonna be available for students and they're great opportunities for students to connect with those of similar backgrounds and identities and learn from each other in that experience as well. But outside of those smaller pockets of community you see all across campus, we also are very proud to have campus wide community that can exist as well. A lot of that comes through our sporting events. Um, we are a division one athletic institution. Um, so that's a nice way to connect students as well. We also have a lot of great campus traditions that uh, we offer to students to connect them. My personal favorite um, that is probably a lot of people's favorites as well comes near the end of the year. Um, so most students by the end of the year in the springtime are pretty tired and uh, you know they're, they've worked so hard to build themselves up to be the best academic they can be. And so as a reward for that, Northwestern hosts the largest student run music festival in the country every single year. It's called Armadillo Day or Dillo Day for short. Um, and we are very excited because we get to choose the artists that come to campus. So it is really nice to be able to throw out some names and have the um, organizations responsible throw us a bone and give us some great names back. Um, such a highlight of the year for so many different people. Um, I would say my, truly my only regret of Northwestern is that they never took my um, suggestion when I requested artists because every single year I requested Beyonce and that request was not heated. And now I'm not saying that I'm still upset about that, but it is something of note for our listeners. So I will put that out there in the virtual space. What's cool about that experience is that the entire music festival is put on by a single student organization. 
um, in partnership with a few others, but they're um, uh, the main line behind it. And they're just one of the 500 different student organization opportunities you have to choose from on campus. So whatever your interest may be, whatever you're wanting to get involved in, know that there's one, if not multiple organizations that will meet that need. And in some bizarre circumstance where you arrive and you find out that you have an interest and there isn't a group to meet that interest, you can make your own very easily. So lots of great opportunities for students to explore there. And it's also a great opportunity for students not only to connect across campus and learn more, but there's a lot of opportunities through student groups to connect with the local areas of Evanston and Chicago as well. And so I'll pass the baton back to Jenna because I know she wanted to talk a little bit about the region that we call home. Thanks so much, Drew. Uh, you are absolutely right. I love talking about the great communities we are part of at Northwestern. Um, the first being in our hometown of Evanston, Illinois, where I like to say it's the best of all worlds. So um, what I mean by that is we are right along the lake shores of Lake Michigan. Um, we cannot get much closer, our, our office especially, uh, to the lake without being underwater because we, we are right on the beach. Students take advantage of this from our beautiful Lakeville um, to renting stand-up paddle boards and kayak a little bit warmer. Um, so many great and beautiful uh, ways to take advantage of the lake. Evanston's also like your quintessential college town, right? Has everything you'd ever need from um, doctor's offices and grocery stores, but it's home to just a really welcoming and supportive community. Um, Evanston residents are proud to be the same place that we are. They love rocking that purple pride. They'll wear a Western hat or put a sticker on their car. Even if they have no formal affiliation with the university, they're just proud to be from the same place that we are. And we're so lucky to have that. We're also really lucky to be close to our other community we're lucky to be a part of, Chicago. We're about three miles from the city limits of Chicago, but 11 miles from the downtown Magnificent Mile area. If our students decide to go into Chicago, there are two main ways they can get there. The first being our inter-campus inter shuttle. So you may or may not know, Northwestern actually has two graduate schools located in downtown Chicago, our law school and our medical school. As an undergraduate student, all your classes will be in Evanston, so you don't have to worry about catching the shuttle in order to make it to class on time downtown in downtown Chicago. But it's a great resource if you have a research uh, position at Lurie Children's Northwestern Memorial Hospitals, um, a great fellowship, an internship downtown, or just want a free way to get to some restaurants and shopping. It's a great way to do that. And did I mention it's free? Because it's free. Um, another great thing, is, a way to get to Chicago is the CTA or the L. This is the public transportation system we have in Chicago. The L is our subway system. Um, how it works in Chicago, each line has a different color, goes to different places. We have multiple purple line stops in Evanston. Um, we really like purple at Northwestern, so maybe that's why, you know. Uh, but taking the L, it takes uh, about 40, 30 to 45 minutes and less than $3. You can explore Chicago's 80 plus unique neighborhoods in both airports. Once our students are in Chicago, there is so much they can do. Um, we could have given a whole 45 minute presentation all there is to do in Chicago, but I'll try to narrow it down. Uh, you know, whether it's taking advantage of pre-professional opportunities with um, offices that are Fortune 500 companies that have offices in downtown Chicago, cultural opportunities, like um, we have a partnership with the Art Institute where our students can get in for free just by showing their wild card or their student ID. If you're a sports fan for me, Chicago is an amazing historic sports city. Um, we have, have NU goes to Wrigley Day every year where students get free tickets to the Cubs game and a limited edition one of a kind purple Cubs hat. I still have mine from last year. It is very cool. Um, like I said, there is so much to do in Chicago. Um, I could continue to talk about it and my family and friends know I have talked about it for more than 45 minutes, but instead I think we'll focus on admissions and financial aid. Um, I like to point out to students and their families that we take a holistic approach to admissions at Northwestern. So what that means is there is no formula, right? We don't put in some numbers, you know, there's no algorithm, right? We look at you as a whole person because we know that you're more than just a bunch of numbers. So we look at quantitative information like grades and things like that, but also important qualitative information like your essays and letters of recommendation to get an idea of who you are, the whole bigger picture. Getting a little bit of ahead of myself though, Northwestern is found in both the common application as well as the coalition application. These platforms allow you to apply to multiple colleges at the same time, so that's why we're on there. We have two application deadlines, the first being November 1. That is our early decision deadline. Early decision at Northwestern is binding. So what that means is you should apply early decision to Northwestern if we're your number one choice school, right? Your closet is already filled with tons of purple and white. 
Uh, the fight song is your ringtone. Um, you can name all the uh, Northwestern alumni that have been on SNL, right? Whatever it is you want to be on our campus, that's awesome, we love to see that. I say that for early decision specifically because when you apply early decision, you, a parent or guardian, and a guidance counselor at your school will all sign a document that states, if I am accepted to Northwestern via early decision, I will be attending Northwestern University and I'll rescind all other college applications. If me just saying that right now made you a little more nervous, maybe a little more sweaty than normal, totally fine. Regular decision is a great option for you because it is non-binding. You can apply to many schools as you'd like. Um, and it's a little bit later deadline as well of January 3rd. Um, but no matter when you apply, we're going to be looking at the same things. One of the first things we'll look at is your high school transcript. Um, it's really important to know that we look at your transcript and your entire application, but especially your transcript within context. Meaning we get to know your high school. So we know that your school has AP classes or IB classes or has none of the above. Maybe y'all don't even do grades at your school, right? Whatever it is, we get to know your high school and we wanna see they're taking the most rigorous courses available to you at your school. So if you have friends that go to the school down the street that have 20 different AP classes available to them, that's great, but if your school only has maybe two or three or, or not any AP classes at all, just focus on the doing the best that you can at your school. In addition to your transcript, um, normally this is where I talk about test scores, but things are a little bit different this year uh, because you know we're still facing the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, first of all, before I talk a little bit about test scores, I want to uh, wish you and your family the best. I hope you're staying safe and healthy as possible. You're washing your hands, you are wearing masks, you're staying six feet apart, you are doing the best that you can. Um, we do the impact of COVID-19. We have decided to be uh, test optional this year. So what that means is um, if you have a test score that you would like to submit your application, great. But that does not, that means you do not have to submit a test score for your application to be considered complete. We have put some um, great frequently asked questions online and a blog post from our director about this decision to go test optional. So please definitely check that out. There's some great resources on there to learn more about that. Um, so yes, test optional. Um, in addition, we require two letters of recommendation, one from a high school guidance counselor and one from a core subject teacher. Um, if maybe you went to a high school like mine where you don't really get to know your counselor super well, Totally fine. You can supplement that with another adult in your life that knows you well. So maybe you have a math teacher and an English teacher to show both sides of your brain. Or maybe you have your math teacher and your supervisor uh, where you volunteer once a week, right? Whoever it is, make sure they're A, an adult. Your friends are awesome. They're great, I'm sure. But they just have like a little bit, you know, of a different kind of perspective, a little bias. Uh, so make sure it's an adult that's sending a letter of recommendation. In addition, make sure it's somebody that's adding a new perspective, right? So if you really like math, maybe don't send 12 letters of recommendation from every math teacher you've ever had, right? We'll get that you like math. It's really quality over quantity when it comes to letters of recommendation. If the two that we require do a great job of summing you up as a person, giving us an idea of who you are, that's awesome. You can just send those two. Quality over quantity. Um, and finally, in your application, you require essays. Um, we'll look at the common application or the coalition application essay that you send in. Make sure you pick a prompt you can answer well and completely. We also have one supplemental essay question, which is simply, why Northwestern? A couple of pieces of advice for the why Northwestern. Make sure you are being as honest and specific as possible. So what I mean by that is everyone in watching tonight has a different reason for wanting to attend Northwestern. Maybe it's a specific academic program. Maybe it's the opportunity to be able to do research in a certain lab that we're affiliated with on campus. Maybe it's because you love wildcats and purple and so together it's like your dream school. Whatever it is, make sure it's honest and specific not only to you as a student, but honest and specific also to Northwestern, right? A lot of great schools will ask the question, why our school? But I shouldn't be able to copy and paste your answer to why Northwestern have it make sense for any one of those other schools, right? So honest and specific. Also, please proofread. I know it's like, um, oh, uh-oh, can you hear me? Oh, there was a quick technical error there. I think my microphone was uh, 
wanted to hear the essay tips for themselves. So they, they cut out for a sec. So yes, please proofread your essay. Um, make sure you're talking about Northwestern and your why Northwestern essay. Um, we have some great uh, discussions that we've put on our YouTube page recently where some of our directors go into things like getting to know colleges during a pandemic when you can't visit, essay writing, lots of great stuff, but definitely check those out. One of the things that we put on, I think it was very recently, it might have been this weekend even, um, was about financial aid. Um, so financially Northwestern, I love to talk about three things specifically. The first being that we are 100% need blind for domestic applicants. So if you are a US citizen, permanent resident or undocumented student, and you're applying for financial aid to attend Northwestern, that need for financial aid will not impact your admissions decision. In addition, we meet 100% of your family's demonstrated need, no matter where you're applying from. So we figure out your need for, uh, by you doing a couple things on your end. Um, you fill out the FAFSA and the CSS profile. The CSS profile is another financial aid form put up by the college board, where we're able to get a, maybe just a little bit uh, dive a little bit deeper into your family's financial picture. Um, there, our financial aid office has more resources and tools to get a better understanding of how to apply for financial aid. Once you do so, um, your family is given what's called an expected family contribution or EFC. This is the amount of money your family is expected to contribute for your college education for that year. Anything that goes beyond that EFC, but is needed to cover tuition, room and board, or books, Northwestern covers. We cover that in the form of scholarships, grants, and sometimes work study, meaning that financial aid at Northwestern University is 100% loan free. Any money that we give you to attend Northwestern is money you don't have to pay us back later on. Something we're really excited about as a school, um, it's really important to all of us to ensure the students that deserve to be on our campus are on our campus and finances don't come in the way of that. If you have questions about financial aid specifically, a great place to get started is our net price calculator. This is located on the financial aid office's website where you can put some info about your family and get an estimated family, family contribution. Um, Northwestern students tend to find it is fairly accurate, but if you have additional questions that go beyond the calculator about financial aid, please reach out to them directly. They are awesome. Call them, email them. Um, even if you haven't applied yet, they can kind of walk you through any questions you may have about your specific situation. If you have questions about not financial aid, other Northwestern things, put them in the chat now if you haven't already. I've seen some already great questions put on there. Um, I'm gonna kind of read a couple. Ooh, okay. So, uh, ooh, Drew, this is a good one for you because I know you were involved in this as a student at Northwestern. Um, are there opportunities for non-performing arts majors to be a part of theater productions? And maybe just not, if you're a, not a performing arts major, to how you get involved in the arts as a student? Definitely, that's such a good question. Um, for any students that are interested in performance, I will say right off the bat, we have a very proud and strong performance culture on campus. And it is not exclusive to students who are majoring in a performance academic area. So you do not have to be a theater major to be involved in theater. There are plenty of opportunities for students to not only you know, be cast in these different shows, but if you're looking to work um, part, as a part of the crew, if you're looking to produce any of these shows, uh, we actually host the largest student written musical every single year. So if you're looking to write a musical as well, all of those things are gonna be available to you. Um, outside of just theater or stage performance specifically, if you're looking to get involved in other kinds of uh, performance, whether that's dance, um, whether that's uh, singing, whatever it might be, instrumental performance, there are going to be non-major opportunities as well. Um, my experience was I was involved in one of our many acapella groups that we have here on campus, and I am not a music major. I was also able to take um, non-major uh, music lessons for credit as well. So plenty of options, but core answer to walk away with is that you are not excluded from performance activities just by not being a performance major. There will be opportunities for anyone who's interested. Thanks, Drew, for telling us more about that. We actually earlier this summer did a student performance showcase on our YouTube channel where we had two students who were involved in performing arts both in and out of the classroom. So definitely check that out on our YouTube page if you haven't already. Um, all right, Drew, I know you also did some great performing arts stuff on campus, but I also know you were really involved with our first year orientation program, Wildcat Welcome. Um, so a student was asking, how are first year students welcome to campus this uh, every year? 
is their orientation, what traditions they take a part of. Can you talk to us a little bit more about Wildcat Welcome in general? Definitely. Um, we want to make sure that you aren't just thrust onto campus and expected to perform as a college student. Um, we don't take the approach of you arrive to campus sometime over the summer to like choose classes and see different spaces and then you just arrive, move in and start classes. Our goal is we make sure we have a really robust transition for our students so that you are making sure that you're acclimated and feeling comfortable on campus and understanding the resources that are available to you before you even start taking classwork. So what that typically looks like, I say typically because I understand that things are gonna look very differently um, this year, but we still wanna make sure we have the same resources. But in a typical year, what we would be doing is taking about um, anywhere between like five to seven or eight days um, that you would, uh, between move-in day and the first day of our fall coursework. And those are gonna be spent interacting in um, different orientation groups, what we call our peer advising groups. Those are students in your academic area. Students you'll be taking classes with during your time. So it's nice to start building those relationships right away. Those groups are led by students who are in that academic area who maybe only be a year or two ahead of where you're at. So automatically they are a resource for you as well. If you're looking to learn about coursework, learn about um, classroom experiences, whatever that might be. And there's also gonna be lots of different um, development opportunities. So learning about what resources Northwestern has to offer, what does it mean to be a part of a Northwestern community? Um, you know, lots of different experiences that we'll be talking about. That all sounds like a lot of work, but we also make sure to add in some fun there as well. We try and make sure that there's opportunities at the end of the day, after all the work you've done to um, make it available uh, for students to have some free time and get to explore a lot of different things. Um, some of my favorites that I've always liked, they bring in a mentalist every single year. And one year I was hypnotized and apparently did some silly things, but if you wanna know more, I guess you'll have to find out. Um, so would definitely recommend that. Um, I know in, uh, in years past as well, we also were able to secure funding and get tickets for taking the entire first year class out to see um, the musical Hamilton. I don't know if you've heard of it, but it's a recent musical and people seem to really like it. So if that is of interest to you, um, know that we make sure those experiences are informative and help make you feel comfortable and supported during your transition to your first quarter at Northwestern, but we also wanna make sure you feel like you're a wildcat and you're having fun with your classmates as well. Thanks, Drew. Wildcat Welcome is one of my favorite weeks on campus, even though I have no formal involvement with it. It's just so great to see everybody in their purple t-shirts um, together, learning more about campus, experiencing traditions, um, especially when those traditions can involve a Tony award-winning musical like Hamilton. Um, so thanks for telling us more about that, Drew. Um, I've seen a couple questions on here about um, early decision and financial aid. And so I just wanna sh shed a little more light on that. Um, first of all, I understand it can be a little bit scary to um, commit to something when you don't have a hundred 10% idea of what your financial aid picture is gonna look like. However, there are lots of things you can do beforehand to get a better idea of what your financial aid may look like when you apply early decision. One of them is using that net price calculator like I talked about. Um, it's really great because it's not only uh, legally required, fun legal fact of the day, every institution in the United States that receives funding from the federal government, so almost all of them, have to have that calculator on their website. So it is, it is fairly accurate and students um, sometimes find they actually get more aid than what that calculator says. It's a great place to get started. I also encourage you to not only speak to the financial aid office, like I said earlier, but to sit down with your family or whoever's helping you pay for school to have those conversations. I know it can be tough sometimes, absolutely, um, but definitely to get an idea of what is comfortable for you and your family um, is a great thing to do before you hit submit on that financial aid and the Northwestern application for early decision. If you receive, uh, if you get in through early decision, exciting, awesome, great, but your financial aid picture looks a little bit different than what you thought it would, you can appeal. Um, it's usually based on significant changes due to, you know, uh, there's goes into a greater detail on the financial aid office's website if there's something that applies to you later on. Um, it's a case by case basis. Um, but just know it's, it's pretty, we, we try to work with everybody as much as possible uh, to make Northwestern the most affordable it can be. So definitely don't be afraid to reach out and contact 
your admissions representative as well as financial aid office before you apply to Northwestern, whether you're applying early or regular decision. Um, okay, so we had a question about how do you two like the facilities, labs, gyms, dorms, et cetera, at Northwestern? So I can speak to a couple of things. Um, as a grad student, I really enjoyed the gyms. Um, they're really nice. Uh, the, uh, the main one, the Henry Crown Sports Pavilion has tennis courts and Olympic sized pool and all these great workout classes that didn't like cost anything um, that I know would cost additional if I went to a gym or somewhere else. Also, I worked at a smaller gym on campus uh, fairly often too called Blomquist. Um, and the cool thing about that one was the Northwestern men's basketball team would practice there sometimes. So it'd be really great to like, you know, think I did a great job on my elliptical and then see the basketball team like having a really hard, intense workout and being like, oh, maybe I need to, you know, go a little bit faster next time. So yeah, uh, really great. Uh, I also really enjoy the food on campus. We could talk about that in a second, but I could talk all night about the food. Um, Drew, what did you think about the facilities during your time on campus? Want to ditto what you've shared so far. Um, I also agree that the facilities have been great. Mentioning that Olympic sized pool, for me, part of my college experience was that I didn't come from a background of swimming, but because the facilities were so nice, I started to explore a bunch of different activities like swimming and taking group yoga classes. So those were really great and helpful for my, my uh, physical health during my college experience. Uh, I can speak a little bit more to eating on campus uh, just because I really enjoyed it. I was in, um, uh, for context as well, we have um, a, a, around seven dining locations for students. And a lot of the time they're going to be centrally located so that even if you are not in, if you're not living in a building with your dining location, it's literally going to be a stone's throw away from where you're at. So you're never having to like trudge through snow uphill both ways just to get a meal. Um, during the winter time, if that is a scenario you might face. Um, but during my time there, I remember so distinctly the dining halls being such a good space for students to like step out of class, step into the dining halls. Um, my friends and I would always get together Friday evenings and have the um, go mad on the desserts bar um, after a week, uh, which I don't know health wise is kind of offsetting all the things I just mentioned before, but at the same time, that was our tradition and traditions are important for any community. Um, and I would definitely add as well that you have a very good support. If you do have specific dietary um, needs, you're gonna be met uh, very well. That was something I was very surprised to see. Um, one of our coworkers in the office, her fun fact is that she has more allergies uh, than there are seats in the large, or um, something along those lines where there's more allergies than like seats in the largest auditorium. Um, in our, um, on our campus. And so that is a really high number, um, but she was able to be met and be able to still eat and be accommodated in our dining hall. So if you are worried about that, any specific concern, there's no need to be because we'll have those supports available for you. Was I missing anything, Jenna? I'm trying to think of other facilities we'd wanna to speak to. In terms of research facilities, I know um, Northwestern's very highly respected and and in many cases well-funded when it comes to supporting our research. So more often than not, we're gonna have the resources and equipment necessary to have a really successful research experience. Not thinking of any other facilities, but if we missed anything, feel free to add on. I think, yeah, those all sound good to me. Um, I'm very jealous of the dessert bar stuff. That sounds, I haven't had dinner yet, so I think that sounds extra good right now. Um, you kind of alluded to this a little bit earlier, but, um, Believe it or not, it does get cold in the winter in Evanston, Illinois. Um, so someone asked a question what campus life is like in the winter. Um, I just wanna say I lived in a warmer place before I moved to Evanston for grad school. And even though I'm from the Northeast originally, it was a little bit of a transition to go back to winter. So if you're coming from somewhere where being at Evanston may be your first you know, snowy winter ever, um, try to, uh, you know, if you can invest in a jacket, layers are always great. I would wear a long sleeve shirt under a sweatshirt, under a fleece, under a vest. Um, there are definitely ways to survive and make it through the winter. If it's a financial hardship for you to maybe buy some of those winter clothing, there are resources on campus that can help you get connected to um, some free winter clothing, which is really great too. Um, so it's, it's doable, we all make it through, but Drew, what is student life like during the winter in Northwestern? Yeah, I, I, I get this question a lot. I know so many students who may be coming from a more temperate 
climate may be a little worried um, that that'll be their experience. I, and I grew up in the Midwest, so I understand my bias and perspective as I approach this. However, I'll, I'll wager and offer my roommate's experience from my freshman and sophomore year, who was from uh, California and therefore not as acclimated to the weather we have here. His success was found when he, um, as Jenna mentioned earlier, made sure to bundle up and wardrobe appropriately for the weather. Um, and that is the case with a lot of students where if you're making sure that you have an appropriate winter coat and you have the appropriate layers, you're gonna be able to manage it just fine. The great news is that while you may be unfamiliar to Northwestern's weather, the Northwestern facilities are not unfamiliar with the weather. And so you will often see if there was snowfall or um, you know any sort of precipitation um, that is gonna cause uh, a stir on your way to class, we have literal fleets of cleaners that will like sweep through these um, sidewalks and they'll salt everything so easily as well. So sometimes it feels like it only snowed outside of the sidewalks um, as you're out and around. So knowing that's not going to be a hindrance to you is very helpful. Additionally, we also have subtle shuttle services available that are going to run on a more frequent basis during times like that because we don't want students having to spend too much time outside in that weather. Um, then again, it's not a focal point of winter that um, students are just thinking about the weather constantly. It's very surprising how quickly life just shifts to different activities that may not be outside, but are still either remote, virtual, um, in person, in indoor spaces, whatever it might be. Campus adjusts really quickly and it's really fun still being able to participate in different things just in a different environment. Exactly. Campus life doesn't stop just because it gets colder outside. So don't worry, uh, you'll still be able to find some fun stuff to do in the colder months. Um, we had a question that I thought was interesting that I liked. Um, someone asked, as former students, did you feel that Northwestern supported you in stressful times? Um, I, I would say yes, in my experience. Um, there are plenty of resources on campus that you can take advantage of as a Northwestern student when um, you may be facing more, more challenging times. Um, for example, when I was in graduate school, I took advantage of CAPS which is a free mental health counseling found on campus. Um, they're really great. Not only can they help you um, with some coping skills, um, ways to deal with stress and anxiety or other mental health issues you or challenges that you may be experiencing like I did. Um, they can also refer you to services beyond campus if you would like that too. Um, they have group meetings, lots of great ways to feel connected and feel like supported in your own mental health experience. So um, I had a positive experience with that resource. Um, there are plenty of student resources on campus too, student led, I should say. Um, there's the Happiness Club, which I think is always really neat. Um, so every year the Happiness Club during um, exams and final season, they do lots of great fun stuff. So when I was in graduate school, they brought, um, therapy dogs and miniature horses to campus, which was so cool. Um, I took a picture with one of the miniature horses and said, I met little Sebastian, fun parks and rec joke, hopefully some of y'all get. Um, I know, Drew, in years past, haven't they like thrown candy at people? Like it's- yeah. Yeah. yeah, they've done different events like that. I know there was one of like, after you finished a test, um, they would like hand out little cuts of bubble wrap because I've never seen someone frown while popping bubble wrap. And also other examples of like students in the library studying hard and folks will come by and offer them sweets and check in. They do a lot of good work. And I would also echo your statement earlier that um, the support you receive from facilities like CAPS are gonna be great. My addition from my personal experience would be that I was, um, and, I, and I think this is a really great question because it acknowledges um, just a very important fact that there will be times during your higher education experience that you will experience stress. I think it would be dishonest for us to say otherwise. So I appreciate you acknowledging that. But in moments of stress that I felt, I was very happy and that I always had someone I could speak with. Um, that whether it was through CAPS or was it um, my advisor or if it was, um, you know, even a program director at times, whatever it might be, it was nice knowing that people were there and willing to listen and having doors open for those conversations. So I think it's important to acknowledge that those times will come, but it's also great to know there are going to be people there to support you as well. I totally agree. Uh, the informal relationships in place at Northwestern are extremely helpful. Um, I don't think there's one way to define Northwestern student because there's so many ways you can experience Northwestern, like you were saying earlier in our presentation. But I think supportive is a, a characteristic that 
almost, I think every single Northwestern student shares. Even if we're all interested in and excited and passionate about different things, we all support each other in really good and fun times like at Dillo Day or the Primal Scream, or uh, if it's, you know, having some uh, cookies delivered late night from downtown Evanston um, to some ch more challenging times that we talked about. So I know that uh, it's it's a great it's a great place to be. I miss campus. I miss being on campus a lot, but I know right now it's for the safest option and the healthiest way. But that makes when we go back to campus be even more fun and even more exciting. Um, but thank you all so much for watching our information session tonight. We really appreciate it. Hopefully, you learned a little bit more about Northwestern tonight. Um, while you're here, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. Hit that notification bell. Um, I've always wanted to say that. Um, <laughs> Uh, it makes sure you, that way you're able to know when we do other great um, live information sessions again, tours, lots of cool stuff we have going on online. Um, follow us on Instagram uh, to get some more uh, exclusive content. Uh, if you have any questions that we weren't able to answer tonight, uh, check out our admissions website, email ug-admission at northwestern.edu. Um, but thank you all so much again for watching. Thank you, Drew, for being here. It was great. And y'all have a great rest of your night. Wash your hands, wear a mask. Stay safe, y'all. Thanks for coming. Go cat.